Okay, ich werde. to not be in peak shape for the contest. You know, I, think, I think people should be embarrassed if they rock up to a show soft, out of condition. Because your conditioning, I don't care who the fuck you are, it's in your control. And if you show up out of shape or out of condition, it means that you either didn't dig long enough or you didn't dig hard enough. That's the fucking facts. There's no other excuses. So when, I people, when I see people showing up the stage out of shape, you know, I can't respect it because I know that the conditioning, that variable, is within their control. You know, it's just a sign of weakness. You, know, you, you weren't willing to suffer for the duration or the intensity. And I'll do any level of suffering required to make sure that when I walk up on that stage, I'm peaked. And my, my condition is at the front of the pack. studies I was doing ultrasound fat thickness on the upper and lateral thigh of soccer and football players and it was so clear that the, 
the subcutaneous fat layer on the leg, their dominant leg, like the, the leg that they keep the ball, was nine times out of 10 significantly leaner than the non-dominant leg, or the leg that they don't kick with. It's like, well, spot reduction is not a thing. How do you explain that? So, it's one of those things where I think maybe the science doesn't quite paint the full picture. And, uh, and that's why I, uh, another reason why I up the volume of the ab training in the deficit or the fat loss phase because I think there just might be something to the, the blood flow to the area, perhaps the fat mobilization locally in the area by, by using the muscles in that localized section a bit more frequently. Even if I'm wrong, it's not going to fucking hurt. Right, last one of these. Peak, but we got four, four more sets of crunches. Oh, nice. You come join? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <sighs> he said come join, he's gone missing. <laughs> Five rounds of carbs per banana. Yeah. Round about. You're getting like over 15 grams of fiber in that. Like, digestion of that carbohydrate is not going to be fast. You'd be so much smarter to do like 50, 60 grams of that carb coming from like a rice base, no fiber source, and you do like 70 grams of banana on top. Like, you get much better out of it. Like, it's just, it's just, it's like, it's not terrible, but you're trying to win a pro card, right? Yeah. Why would you not do the best way? Why would you do like an 80% good way? And like, it's like, well, if you say like, oh, I like the bananas, it's like, do you like the bananas more than winning? The rest of your physique and just sort it. I wouldn't think you're flat. Yeah. I think I need this. Yeah. And this. Yeah. That's what I need to focus on. Chest bump is mainly because you want more blood. When you're more full, like, you have a lot more detail in the chest. You know what I mean? Like, all the lines are there now. They're just not deep because you're, you're flat, which is okay. Everyone, the the competitors that are all all about the Instagram updates, like eight, seven, six weeks out, you know, and they, and they look great, but they can't hold it together when it really gets tough. In that, yeah. la that last bit. Yeah. So. And I think that's that's what I'm focused on is yeah I'm in a good spot you know, but you can fucking bungle it if you're not careful. Yeah, in this exactly. Last yeah. Six weeks. I mean, like, this is where people fucking fall off, you know. Because I'm lean, I know that, but like to get truly peeled is a, a different kind of yeah, me mental stay, battle. Yeah, stay in the grind, yeah. man. Yeah, like it's truly yeah. staying in the grind. You can't back off. Basically, if you back off because you think like you're ahead, that's when you start to fall behind. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. To slippery slope that one. Yeah. I believe like that's the way, like that's the way for the guys, even guys who are hit. Like looking at Jackson, I'd be like, yeah, okay, condition wise he's a hit. But I'm like, if you want to get there, get to the end point, it's like you just gotta focus on the toss. Just get the toss time, get the toss time. Got all day. Basically. Coming from Edwards and I'll do 100 grams of this pineapple, which gives uh, 13 ish grams of carbs. And then I have 60 grams of carbs coming from the cream of rice. So uh, a pretty high carb for me meal, um, but also low fiber, low fat. So I can digest it quickly and have the amino acids and the carbohydrates in the blood while I'm uh, training and not locked up in the, uh, in the GI. And obviously, I, I allocate more of my carbohydrates around the training window because how I train that my ability to perform when I'm leaving is going to be my biggest dictator of how much muscle I can grow or hold in the contest prep. And I think a lot of amateur athletes make the mistake of being like, oh, I'm, I'm hungry in the evening and like I, I'd like to have a nice meal in the night so they, they, they backload all their, their calories to the evening, you know, and then they, they go into these workouts, you know, underfed, underfueled, their, their rep and performance drop off is more significant and then they look like absolute fucking garbage on show day because they've lost all their muscle because they're not able to maintain their intensities or their um, or their volumes. But it's like, okay, yeah, you get you get a you get a, a taste of nice and meal before bed, but you lost. So depends what your priorities is, but I uh, I value success and, and winning my shows much more than I do the enjoyment of my meals. And, enjoyment of my day. Uh, I'm, I'm eating to win and, and whatever I need to do to do that, I will, I will do. That is enough chit chat. I am well hungry and starving. So we eat. Like, shorter super high calorie like super compensation day that's what we call it or like spread out across a few days yeah assuming you're not rushing to so, so obviously you're doing one day you're rushing to each other yeah, yeah I, I, timeline wise what do you think is like more effective i've been trying like different ways with my clients because i was a diet break guy which is like the seven days of like moderate feeding and in my experience doing that you just chew so much time away like and then you end up having to like extend the, the prep of the fat loss phase so fucking long yeah. it's like I, I don't think that's the right way. Yeah. So I I like somewhere between one to three days and a little bit more aggressive. Um, but again it's like and this is the art of coaching, it's like whether it's one or three days depends on like how dug down that person is, you know, because um, like I know that like for myself that once I like really start redlining and like feeling and like get to the stage where like you're walking around like lifting one leg after the other is really kind of a challenge. Like a day can can bring me back to be like, all right, I, I got another five in me. Um, but, like, some people you know, they just get so depleted that like one day just shoots straight through. Um, but I, I do like looking at body weight as a metric. Like, like I, I've had clients where like I'll in a day and, you know, and, and weight goes down again. It's like well, I'm not putting them back in a deficit. Yeah, I'm gonna give them two days or three days. So generally like my approach when I'm refeeding is like I'll try and put two kilos back on that. And, and that that should be because I wouldn't recommend giving a refeed unless someone's flat and knowing like what the potential is for muscle glycogen yeah, like, yeah, we're, we're muscle looking back. somewhere around like 480 grams of like glycogen that yeah. we put on and then add three other parts to that with the water we're looking somewhere around two kilos so I'm, I, I try to rest on my head like again assuming it may flat and we should be able to know that the goal should be to, to put somewhere around two kilos back on them yeah. 
So those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Ben. Um, Benjamin Broughton is my full name. Um, I'm a IFBB Pro Classic Physique athlete. Um, I've done now 37 shows um, altogether, amateur and pro shows. Um, so yeah, so that's who I am. I'm the owner of this gym, BPC, where you guys would have watched some of the videos of where we're training at in Thailand, Bangkok. So Jackson's come over to have a training camp. Aside from the actual physical training, we've had some conversations about the value of teamwork and pushing each other past failure, not just from a training perspective, but just the mindset and also the, the, the culmination of like just being super focused for a week, um, changing your environment. So Jackson was like, look man, enough chat, let's do it. So he, uh, he made the call, Harvey flew in from Singapore, Bax and I have pushed work away a little bit. So this week has been focused on prep and uh, Jackson just looks completely different in five days, man. So 10 sessions, with, we're into session nine now, and he just looks like he's made a month of progress. I can go on and on about his physique, which obviously genes make a difference, but um, I prefer to elaborate on, I guess, what's really struck me. I've trained with a lot of guys, worked with a lot of athletes, um, had the, the opportunity to even train with and meet like other pros, you know, like some of them quite high level. One thing I will say is like, um, I think the most impressive slash endearing thing about Jackson is like his sense of belief, man. Like his sense of belief in, in the guys around him, in like Harvey, myself and Bax. So when you hear him speak about us, it's, it's different. Uh, he really wants the best for you. And it's almost like he has just that little bit less for himself. You know, as I've been, I've been like just observing him a lot this week as, as we're training together. It's like, he does second guess himself a little bit. And every time he does though, what he does with that is he almost turns it around and goes, right, if I second guess myself, let me kind of fill in that void, fix that doubt with just a bit more hard work. And that's, that's something that you don't see a lot in, uh, in, in, you know, in the competing scene with anyone that goes to the gym. Like that's really impressed me. Like every time he's not so sure about something, he just chooses the harder path. He chooses to work. Um, and that's, that's rare. And that's, that's why I believe, like I'll put my name down saying this, like he's gonna go pretty far in this sport. Genetics, whatever it is you wanna speak about, like that's gonna take him very far. We just looked at his physique, good light, bad light, you know, different angles, different poses, maybe half an hour before this Q&A. He looks, <laughs> he looks very ahead from a condition perspective and that's fine and good. But the main thing is like, when I see him pose, man, there's confidence in the poses. There's, there's, there's grit developed from working hard. Like he's, he's built his program, built his mindset around the gifts he's received with his physique and also the gifts he's not received. And you can see it in the way he poses and the way he kind of presents his body. Like, I like his physique. I am not a, you, you guys who know me, know I'm not a fan of men's physique as a, as a category. But I'm a fan of his physique, man. Like, as much as I'm his friend, that I'm sure that has some bearing, but like, I wanna see how he looks on stage. Like, so much so that I'm gonna fly. I wasn't supposed to watch his show. I'm gonna fly in. I'm gonna make a flight just to watch him get on stage. Uh, so I'll fly into Japan, uh, see him get on stage. We'll see how that goes. Funny story, so this will be a funny story. So Jackson was in um, Singapore. Um, I have a gym there as well. Um, and he was doing a seminar, so he reached out to train uh, through a mutual friend. And I was like, hmm, I'm not so sure about this guy. You know, he's an evidence-based guy. He lives online. Usually not my cup of tea. So I spoke to Harvey and Bax, and they were like, look, man, let's, let's train with him one session, and, and we'll, 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 we'll see how he is, you know? So I asked him, I said, what do you want to do? What body part do you want to do? Um, lo and behold, he said, lower body. He said, let's hit legs. So Harvey, um, <laughs> Bax and I had a running joke. We're like, you know what? This is a men's physique, dude. He can't come into my house, train legs and win. So we, we got to mess him up. We got to mess him up. So we planned a program that was going to mess us up and well, as well. And just be like, look, let's see who, let's see who calls it quits first. Um, and Jackson impressed, man. He, he didn't quit. He could hang with us. He pushed us in some exercises and he was all in. Like strengths aside, you know, like strong and weak, that has, no bearing on what, what we uh, consider as, as like valuable, but this guy was in it. This guy was like, he was not trying to pussy out some of the reps. He was not leaving anything in the tank. He was going for it. And um, after that leg session, stamp of approval, like this guy can hang with us. Like, you know, he's in the crew. 
Um, and since then, man, we've just clicked. Like, the more I get to know him, uh, we align on a lot of our values with coaching, a lot of our ideas with nutrition, you know, our views on like what prep should be for someone, um, what sustainable is, your know, mindset if you want to improve, the sacrifices you have to make, um, the value that lies in, you know, just kind of taking yourself to task and like just being a better person. Um, so yeah, man, we get along. We'll see how things go the rest of this prep, but for now, things are good. I wish him the best. Um, he'll see this later on. I don't know, we'll put this into a video and send this to him. Um, thank you guys for your questions. Um, see you guys around, see you at the show.
I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. You just have to make weight. <laughs> oh, yes, you've got weight limit now. I'm, when you come out on your own, that's the first time anyone sees you, including the judges. So you want to make a kind of impression. Because what we do is when you come out, we're like, oh, yeah, he looks great. I'm going to put him in the first call out. He's good, but he's not confident in the second call out. So this key moment is actually when you first come out. But if for any reason you don't make it, the next show, don't give up. There's lots of shows. And when you look like that, it would just be a case of keep showing up, keep training, stick on the diet, and you'll get it. We get it this year. Yeah. You know, I can't say for sure. But then, yeah. Definitely a contender. Yeah. And then straight into the pro game, right? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. I always tell people once you get a pro card, you're back to the beginning. Yeah. So that would be the goal. Yeah. I, I would say with that physique and you in a pro card, why not just jump into a pro show as soon as you're able to, if you feel good? Because then at least you're standing next to pros who may be seasoned pros, then you can gauge where you are, right? Because you can't do that. You look, look great against amateurs, but how do you look with standing next to pros? It doesn't matter about the placing, that first show is more about like, do I look good? Especially if there's some like good names in the show. Sometimes I tell people, do tough shows just so you can stand next to like top people. Yeah. That way you can really tell how far away or how close am I to them. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't care what they say, I don't care about someone Then you've got the right show. mind, yeah, 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 don't care what they say. Yeah. I mean, it's nice and all that to have like that kind of compliment, I don't think it does you good. For me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always say the results on the stage, or how you look on the stage is more valuable, yeah. right? And, even the placings, I wouldn't get too worried about that. When you go into the pro division, you don't get caught up in like when the you placings. But only did I look better than last time? How's my focus look? How's my individual routine look? How do I look in the comparisons? That's all the feedback you need, you know. So I know everybody's desperate to qualify for the Olympia, but when is the right time? Timing, that's key. Everything but in this sport, it's like there's just and you know yourself. I know you've only seen your second show coming up, but like he knows, I know, I've done more than 30 shows. Sometimes you just nail the timing right. Yeah. There's been times I've woken up in the morning, looked in the mirror and thought, oh, no one's beating me today. And I didn't even know who's competing, but I'm like, nah, I've nailed it. Yeah. And usually I was right, you know, so you'll, you'll get those times, but just keep, just keep plugging away. I, I, you look like a dedicated guy, so. You know, well, thank you so much for your time. No, I mean, I didn't really do much, but no, it, it helps. Give yeah. my two cents. No. <laughs> yeah, no worries, anytime, man. 5 p.m. session two, running double sessions. You can count three sessions if you count the cardio. And I, I wouldn't fucking want it any other way. It's just from get up to or go to bed. We are, we are bodybuilding. And yes, we're not doing two hour workouts per session. But what I found with doing the more regular sessions each day, you know, doing one cardio session and two weight sessions split up, is uh, you're able to keep much higher quality and intensity in the sessions in every, every set. And perhaps in off season it's not really needed, you know. But for someone like me who's just carbohydrate restricted, energy restricted, you know, trying to trying to get through a three and a half hour leg day, I do it, you know, but. I'd be lying if I said I'm truly maintaining maximum intensity from rep one till the final rep of the workout three and a half hours later. You're just you're fighting against physiology. As much as the, the mindset is tuned in, you know, and eventually you're just going to deplete so much glycogen that you're not able to function optimally. So by, by doing the session, you know, an hour, hour and a half, then go back, rest, eat, refill, recharge, and come back for the, the second session fresh. It's just, it's giving way, way more quality uh, to the workout time. I think it's, um, I think it's allowing me to make much more productive sessions on a daily basis. And that's why I'm able to hold so much more size and fullness in this prep, even on super low carbs when I'm, uh, I'm getting lean. So we got a, uh, our PM session is arms. Um, my triceps, well, my arms are generally pretty crappy, but I really want to focus on the triceps, so we're going uh, to torch the tries first up.